Hello and welcome to my stamp studio. Today I would like to show you my brand new class to go kit featuring the Buy the Dock stamp set and coordinating dies. So the bundle is available in Stampin' Up's mini catalog. It's on page 49. It is a 12 stamp set and it's clear mounted, cling labeled, and then it has these 11 coordinating beautiful dies that bundle for a price of $42.25, which I think is a really good price for a bundle this size. So as you can see, it has a very nice little fine lined uh, images here, which just scream watercoloring to me. And that's what we're gonna be doing a little bit today. This dock, the boat, I love how this rope just kind of hangs here so that you can kind of dock your boat over here. Uh, there's a little fish jumping out of the water. Here's a few little water, um, images here and then there's uh, some paddles and there's different options for the paddles that I'll talk about here in just a little bit. But there's a stamp image here. There's a cute little sitting frog, a flying seagull. Both of those have framelits that coordinate with them. There's also this little edge of scenery here, uh, kind of a beachy um, uh, shoreline and that also has a framelit that will coordinate with it. And then for the words, happy birthday, here for you, thank you for making a difference in my life, and I'll always look up to you no matter how much I've grown. So that's the stamp set. The dies are here, and you have one that coordinates with the boat, one that coordinates and punches out that cute little dock. There's the little sitting frog die. There's also a leaping frog die, which is so cute. Just use plain little maybe green cardstock, and uh, it has a few little embossing as well as cutting, so it gets a little texture to his body there. There's a seagull. Uh, that's the one that coordinates with the stamp. And then you have these two paddles up here that coordinate with the stamp. But they also give you an additional two more slightly bigger paddles that have a little bit of a wood grain embossed to them. So you could just you cut them with just plain cardstock. Here's another die that cuts uh, just kind of some shoreline kind of um, grassy area. Again, in addition to punching it out is giving you a little bit of an embossed look here too. And then this piece is the one that I mentioned that coordinates with this little shoreline piece here that actually cuts out just the top edge of that so you can pre, uh, create some really cool layering uh, effects with that along with this die as well. So a nice little bundle that uh, obviously is great for masculine cards and with Father's Day just a month away and possibly a male birthday coming up I thought that it would be a great time to showcase this bundle. But also for those of you who know me you know I love the beach and so anything beachy, water, it is all for me. So, all right, so how do you get this bundle and a free class to go kit? My ordering dates for my Buy the Dock class begins today and runs through May 24th. Your class to go kit will include all the card stocks and papers, pre-cut and scored, an envelope and any pre-cut ribbon, or in this case, twine, needed to complete your kit cards, okay? And I'm gonna show you, you get supplies enough to create two of each of these cards here, okay? I must point out that if you do not live locally, I do need to charge just a $3 postage fee for the mailing of the kit to you. Anything above and beyond what is included in the stamp set and die bundle and your class to go kit, I will be offering as an add-on product at a 10% discount, but only with the purchase of the bundle. So if you're interested in any of those add-on items, they will be listed with the description of this video, and I'll try to point them out during my demonstration here. Uh, so that you can see what add-on products are for this class. The only way for you to get the discount, though, is if you contact me with your order. It's the only way I can give you the discount is if I place the order for you, okay? So all this information, like I said, will be with the description of this video. Uh, feel free to contact me, though, if you have any questions about any of this and when you're ready to order. 
So let's get stamping. Let's ink it up. All right. I think I'm going to start with the dock card. This one here. And as I shared just a little bit ago, when I first saw this, of course, it's water. Anything water to me really screams watercolor technique. And I feel that the best way to watercolor is to use black embossing. So all these images, the dock, the boat, the little seagull flying here, the little frog, and all your little shoreline here, I have black embossed first. And if you're going to watercolor with black embossing, you want to make sure and black emboss first, okay? Because you don't want your paper to be wet um, when you go to do any embossing, okay? I hope that made sense. Anyway, just uh, I'll show you here in just a second. So your kit would come like this. Obviously, you get a very vanilla envelope. You're going to receive the Mossy Meadow cardstock base, and then you're going to receive two uh, very vanilla pieces that measure four by five and a quarter. I have one for the inside, and I have one here for the outside. And then you're going to uh, receive two different pieces of watercolor fluid 100 paper, okay? One is the perfect size that layers right there on the front of your card, and then the other one is going to be used to stamp your Im images on to be able to cut them out with the dies. All right, so those are your pieces. Right now, we're just gonna be concerned about the watercolor pieces, okay? And like I said, we're gonna do all of our embossing first before we do our watercoloring. So to emboss, I always suggest an embossing buddy. This is a little um, guy that is, I never used to thought, think that you needed it, but you certainly do. Um, I rub it all over the uh, paper that I'm going to emboss on. It gets rid of any static, any extra uh, oils that might have come off from your fingers to cause fingerprints or that kind of thing. So I try to always remember to buddy before I emboss. And then to emboss, you're going to use your Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad. Okay. Both of these items are add-on items to this class Okay, at a 10% discount. So the first thing I want to grab is the stamp that has these cute little uh, shoreline edge here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, ink it up with my Versamark. Now when you go to uh, stamp with this, you're not going to see any colors. It's a clear ink pad. Okay, so if it bothers you not to be able to see that stamped image before you stamp the second one, kind of sh just right above there, feel free to go ahead and put embossing powder on there after each time you stamp, okay? I also want to stamp that little seagull. And I'm just gonna put him way up here at the top right, okay? And then I'm gonna pull in my embossing powder and I'm gonna pour it over there. You don't really wanna waste a lot of time. You wanna make sure that you get your embossing powder on there obviously before the ink dries, okay? And I'm just tapping off the extra. Now, I see that I have a few uh, little pieces of the embossing powder that have stuck to my paper. Here we go is the fact that I use my embossing buddy. So you can always take just an old little paintbrush and come in here and just remove those little pieces because you don't want to see those in your final work. I come down there and do the same. Okay, so I think I have all of them there on that piece. I'm just going to set this aside, and then I'm going to work on embossing this piece. So this piece here, the little bit smaller watercolor piece that you'll have in your uh, kit, you're going to stamp the dock, the boat, and that cute little frog on. And what I suggest you do is mount them on the uh, larger block. And I wish I, this is E, block E. Uh, and so I mounted all of them on here so that, that way I can just simply stamp all of them at the same time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get some ink on my stamps. Notice how I'm taking the ink down onto the stamp. Sometimes that's a little bit easier when you have a bigger block and you're um, inking uh, larger images. Go ahead and really press. And because these are a little bit larger images, I'm taking just a little more time than I did the first time just to make sure that that paper is indeed soaking up that ink. Uh, watercolor paper uh, has a little bit more of a porous uh, surface, and so sometimes it can be a little bit harder uh, for that ink to get down into all those grooves. So give it some time. Okay. So there I have my boat. 
Now my frog, and then we'll go ahead and put some, and I'm just take, I keep my embossing powder in uh, Tupperware, and then I have a little spoon that I love to just kind of scoop it out on, and then I can use that to tap off any extra, all right? Now, like I mentioned with this piece and using the paintbrush to get any extras off, not so important with this piece because these are actually all going to get cut out with the dies. And so it really doesn't matter if there's any extra little embossing powder around the edges or not. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take my embossing gun. And I'm just letting it warm up here first. And I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this on the camera. Uh, and it's really not safe for me to pick it up and bring it up closer to the film, or to the camera, I mean. So uh, most of you have probably embossed before. I'm just holding it steadily over the image and watching for it to get just a little bit darker and shinier. And then I know that that embossing powder has melted. Once your gun's warmed up, it actually goes pretty quickly. Cute little frog. Oh, it's adorable. You know, these images alone would be beautiful just stamped, but I love the fact that there are dyes that coordinate with this dot. I think this dot is just so clever and unique. Okay, I think I have that one all done. Let's do this one real quick here. Notice I'm holding my paintbrush here just so that I can hold on to my paper so it doesn't blow away. Sometimes your paper can get away from you as you go to heat. Usually once it starts to melt, you get some heat on there though, it holds in place pretty well. You just want to be very careful not to burn your fingers, put your fingers down there. And... Nobody wants to go to the hospital with the burn unit right now. Uh -huh. Alright, those look all nice and shiny. And they are all... All that embossing powder is melted. Okay, so there we have our two pieces. So now we're gonna do what I think is the fun part. So a lot of people are very intimidated by watercoloring, but I'm gonna show you a few little tips and tricks here. I have Reinker, uh, Balmy Blue, Pear Pizzazz, Smoky Slate, and Soft Suede. And what I do, and you've seen me do this at class, is I take one of my clear blocks, this is the H block, and I just put the reinker right onto the block to be able to use it as my palette to grab my colors, okay? So I'm working on just an old piece of cardboard here. It's always nice to have a little bit of something on your surface just because um, watercoloring can be just a little bit messier. My aqua painter is nice and full of water. I'm going to go ahead and just take a little bit off there on the side. And on this piece, I want this to be green down here in this left-hand corner. So I'm going to dip into my pear pizzazz. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit over here on my blotter, just because I don't want it to be too dark when I bring it over here. Okay. Remember in watercoloring, you can always make things lighter, but it's a little more difficult to make things... I'm sorry, it's easy to make things dark, but it's hard to make things lighter. I think I said that right. I do have a few little tricks. Uh, just in case you do get something that uh, happens to be a little darker than what you want it. And I'll show you here in just a minute what that trick is. So I'm done with the pear pizzazz. I'm going to go ahead and just clean off my aqua painter there on my blotter. And again, I'm going to take my blue, and at first I'm going to take it off on my blotter there first, okay? And then just with a swift, kind of quick motion, I might squeeze this just a time or two to get my a little bit more water out of my aqua painter to help these this blue go on a little nicer. I think the trick with watercoloring is playing around with how much water you have, uh, whether you get too much or too little. That's what people get most upset about. So I have this pretty dark blue here, and that's kind of what I want because this is the water to me down here. The top portion is going to be the sky, so it's going to be a little bit lighter. Notice how I was very careful along this edge over here with the green. 
If I have those meet up, they can often bleed into themselves. And if that's the look you want, by all means do it. But usually people get upset when things start to bleed through there. Now I have just a little bit of that blue still on here. So if I squeeze my aqua painter, I can come in here and I can get just a very light shade of blue, okay, for this sky. Again, being very careful as I go up against that green. And then just gently coming down here and helping that water blend into that sky. I think I want just a little more blue up here. So I'm going to come up here. And it's okay if it's very pale or very streaky here. That's what the sky does, right? That's nature. I'm going to dip in just a little bit here and come right, instead of going right off on the blotter, I'm going to go right on the bird, my little seagull, to make him dark. Er, okay? So to help that dry, I'm going to take my embossing gun and just quickly run it over it. I think that looks pretty good. Depending on how much water you used, if your paper seems very saturated, in addition to drying it from the front side, you can flip it over and you can dry from the back and it will actually dry a little bit quicker. You'll notice that it's pretty dry once the paper starts to flatten. Okay. While it's still warm, sometimes I take it and just kind of bend it a little bit. This is a 140 pound uh, paper, so it's pretty thick. Uh, it can take it, but it also wants to kind of curve and arch sometimes, especially when you add water or some uh, heat element to it a little bit there too. So kind of, and it's, so it's very easy to flatten just like I did there, okay? So we're done with that piece. We're gonna pull in this piece here real quick. And uh, I'm gonna get my blue off my aqua painter here. And I am going to dip into my smoky slate gray. Now, I want this real light. It's going to look like an old dock, uh, kind of a rustic old dock. So I want this to be a little bit gray or a little weather and water worn here. Notice I'm not being super careful about going outside the lines here. This is all going to get cut out. Done with that, going to reach in and get some of my soft suede. Notice the first time I put this down, it's dark. So I'm gonna go in here in my boat and I'm gonna highlight some of these areas. I'm gonna highlight this middle section here all around the perimeter of the boat. I highlighted the little seats in there and then this front. And then I'm gonna come around and do those sides. I can clean off some of that brown. I have less on my aqua painter and then I can come in here and just a little lighter shade of that soft suede really gives a lot of shading to this boat. And then I just kind of go around and just work it all around. But you really get that shading and that uh, definition there. Let's get a little more soft suede here. We need to come over here and I decided just to do a little contrast on these posts on the dock. And then, of course, our little rope that's going out. And then to really anchor this dock, go all along this edge here. If you wanted to make this gray, you certainly could. But I thought it just added a lot of definition there to do that. Go ahead and get my soft suede off my aqua painter. And then I'm just going to reach into my blue here. Now, here's a case where I have just a little too much water. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to get a Kleenex, and I want to show you a little trick. Always, It's handy to have a little Kleenex with you to just be able to dab and see how I pulled all that color off. So that's my trick for when you get way too much color on something. You can easily go in and just pull the color off with a Kleenex, okay? Got way too much water, squeezing that. There we go. I really want it to be a pretty blue there. 
Uh, same thing with the dock. If your dock was too dark right now, I just cleaned off my aqua painter. I'll come in here and I'll add just a little bit of water over that. And again, take my Kleenex, come in here and pick some of that color up. Okay? A nice little trick there. All right, get my aqua painter clean here. And I'm going to reach in for just a little bit of this pear pizzazz. And if it's been the other times like I have when I've colored this little frog, I do, well, it's going to work out a little better here now. I usually get him a little too dark as well, just because he's smaller. But there you go. You can go right in there, and you can take some color away. Okay, so there's some tricks for you with uh, the aqua painter and watercoloring. Okay, so we are done with the watercoloring. I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece out now. Now this piece has the dies that coordinate with it, so you'll take your boat die, the dock die, and the little sitting frog die and punch those out, okay? And just for time's sake, I did that already. So I have the boat, I have my little frog, and then I have the dock. I left myself this little piece of washi tape here because I wanted to tell you that these dies, I have noticed, uh, they really hug these images but they can also slip a little bit uh, on your plate. So make sure and use some washi tape or a post-it note or something like that to be able to anchor that framelit down over that image. That way it cuts out nice and uh, beautiful, okay? All right, so I have those images there. The other thing, I'm gonna put those aside here because I forgot one little thing I wanna do here. I'm gonna pull in my Pretty Peacock ink pad, which would be an add-on item to this class, and I'm gonna use that cute little water and I'm just going to go along the bottom edge here just to make that look more realistic. And I can ink it up once and then I can stamp it twice. And you get different shades of that which I think make it even look a little more realistic. Okay, And how high you do this water is completely up to you. How much you do, whatever but it really gives it a realistic little scene there, okay? Okay, so now I think we are ready to attach everything. This cute little frog, a mini dimensional, fits perfect on the back side of him. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick him down here in that lower little grassy area. And then I think I'll put my dock on next. I use two larger dimensionals here on the bottom and then right behind that little bird, a mini dimensional fits perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my dock so that it's over here along the grass, but yet it's reaching out into that water. Okay? And then our boat, I put two dimensionals on the back side of him. It, I guess I should say. I shouldn't give it a... And then I like to attach it so that it's right underneath the tip of that rope there because I think it makes it look very realistic like it's really hanging onto that dock. All right? Now, also in your kit, you will receive a piece of just scrap uh, very vanilla. And with that very vanilla, you're going to stamp with your pretty peacock. Oops, I'm having a hard time finding a piece of very vanilla. Where's one? There we go. Uh, and we're going to make this one a happy birthday card. Obviously, you saw the other sentiments that were in this set, so you are welcome to use any of those. But I thought this made a kind of a neat birthday card. I'm going to use our tailored punch here. And this would be a tailored tag punch, and this would be an add-on item to this class. And when I go to punch this out, I'm going to make sure that the happy birthday is over to the right of this punch, okay? It's kind of a small sentiment for this size punch, but it's kind of a nice way to use punches, even though your greeting might not fit all the way in there, or might not be the right size for your punch, I guess is what I should say. So this is kind of a nice way to use it though, but yet I just cut off that extra there and then that allows me to still have that 
cool little angle of the punch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to attach this up here in this corner right along the edge there. And then I think we're ready to bring our card base back in. And because watercolor paper is kind of a little heavier, thicker paper, I'm going to use the multi-purpose glue to attach that to that piece of very vanilla that I placed down with dimensionals. Okay, Just kind of hold it a little bit. Make sure all your corners are down. I think one of the coolest things you can do with watercoloring, uh, especially with a whole large piece like that, is then to layer it on a uh, either a very vanilla or a whisper white because it just kind of frames it nicely and really shows it off well. Now, I thought this needed just a little bit of something else, so I have some black twine here that is actually from the Country Club twine combo pack that's in the uh, mini catalog right now. It has some of these fabulous like just uh, core uh, basic colors here which I think are really fun especially for a masculine card. And all I did was just take two pieces that are about oh an inch and a half to two inches long here and I'm just going to take them and tie them in a knot. The trick is trying to make sure you get both ends through here, especially while you're on camera. I don't pull them super tight because I think uh, if you're, they're a little loose, they actually kind of look like a little nautical knot, so I think that's kind of fun. Then just to give it a little more interest, I just took and I just left these little frayed ends. I thought that was kind of cute just to leave them like that. Then I'm going to grab my glue dots. And go ahead and pull one off behind that knot. And then there you go. Just adds a little something something up there in the corner. Okay? So that's our first card for the By the Dock Class to Go kit. All right? So the second card, just to refresh your memory, is this one here. A little simpler, but still using watercoloring and some embossing. Your card kit will include these items. Of course, a Whisper White envelope, a basic gray card base. You'll also get an inside piece. Oops, I don't have it. Oh, yes, I do. Look here. I'm all ahead of myself. An inside piece that measures four by five and a quarter. And I went ahead and black embossed the I'll always look up to you no matter how much I've grown sentiment and put the little boat down there in the inside as well. And then you're going to receive a piece of smoky slate. And I am putting as an add-on item with this class the High Seas 3D Embossing Folder, which is actually retiring. It is one of the 3D folders, so I have a yellow sticker on it. It does require the blue plate to run it through the Big Shot, okay? But I thought this was very appropriate. It has a nice little texture of kind of some water, so obviously goes well with uh, our bundle here, okay? And then you'll also receive a larger piece of just plain Whisper White, and you'll have a smaller piece of watercolor fluid 100 paper okay so the first thing I'm going to do is take my smoky slate piece here put some dimensionals on the back side of that and layer that down onto my basic gray card base and you can see that it's small you're welcome to center it I just did it for a little more interest I just uh, put it over here to the right side. Okay, just a little different there. Put our card base aside here and let's work with our Whisper White piece. And our Whisper White piece, we are going to stamp two paddles, the thank you for making a difference in my life stamp, and then we need the dock. And remember, I used the dock on this bigger mounted with the first one, so I'm going to go ahead and um, take those other two stamps off of there so that I can just use the dock. Now, I am planning on doing some black embossing. So I inked up my stamp. I'm going to go ahead and rub my embossing butter buddy over the top of it. It should work like butter. <laughs> Go ahead and ink that there. My dock is all stamped on there. I'm going to do the same thing with my sentiment. 
and I'm going to stamp it up here towards the top right hand corner and then I'm going to take the little paddle and I'm going to stamp two of those down here along the bottom edge into this right corner okay and it's important that you place all of these stamps on the, your little whisper white piece just like this so that they'll punch out nicely you have enough room for everything go ahead and get my embossing powder on here tap off my extra and there you go okay so you should be able to get the dock die around there there are two paddle dies there that you can do and then this actually gets punched out with a handheld punch and I'm using the label me lovely punch to punch those out okay so the process of television here I have these punched out with the dies I have my two little paddles I have my dock remember to use some washi tape to help hold those dies in place the paddles especially can be a little finicky just because they're smaller and then you're left with your greeting here and that's when I'm going to take the label me lovely punch Come in here and grab that, which I think coordinates with that perfectly. Okay, so we have our pieces there. Now your watercolor piece. I think we're all done with the embossing and the cutting. We're going to do one more thing with this embossing piece. I'm going to pull my uh, piece of uh, cardboard in here to use as my uh, protector there, my surface. I'm going to grab my aqua painter again. And this time we're just going to use the Balmy Blue and the Pear Pizzazz Reinkers. And I don't know if I said this, but that punch I just used and all these reinkers will be uh, add-on items for this class. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add lots and lots of beautiful blue. Clean this off. And then I'm going to take my Pear Pizzazz and do the same thing. And it's up to you how bold you want these. Notice how I'm not being precise. I'm just coming in here and just doing a wash. You can see how those colors are kind of starting to bleed. That doesn't bother me, but some people that actually bothers <laughs> when they bleed like that. I am going to get my little corners. I think it makes it look a little more finished when at least the corners are done. Okay. Then I might take my embossing gun over the top of this just to dry it a little bit. Because I did get a fair amount of water on there. I love with watercoloring when you get that, especially in a beachy scene. It just, to me, it makes it look like seagrass or, you know, it just adds to that whole beachy shore look. Here's a teaching opportunity. So if you get this up here in your top hand corners and you don't like that, that's because there was just a little too much water on your paper. So if you come back in here lightly with your aqua painter and you can blend those away, okay? And then just make sure that you do it over the whole thing, lightly all the way down, okay? Then you'll get more of a kind of a streaky look versus that water uh, spot look, I guess. I don't know what to call it. But obviously, if you like that look, leave it. That's what I love about water coloring. There's so many fun different looks with it. Okay, so we have that piece all ready to go. So we're ready to throw our card together here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my watercolor piece, flip it over, put some dimensionals on the back side of it to hold it down. And then it is going to just go over here to the side. You know what? It's just a little too uh, long. I think I mismeasured just a tip. I'm going to come over here to my paper cutter real quick. I'm going to take a quarter of an inch off that. Yours in your kit will be measured perfectly. All right, doesn't that look much nicer when you just have a little bit of a quarter of an inch all the way around there, okay? 
And then we're going to apply our dock here to the card. And I did just like I did with the first card. I placed two larger dimensionals at the bottom. And then to hold that little bird, I put a mini dimensional there. And this guy is just going to sit kind of up and off a little bit into the sky or water with your little bird just hanging right off there. Then I have the sentiment here that I'm going to apply to regular size dimensionals too. And it's just going to be placed right down here in the bottom left hand corner. Just to finish that off a little bit, I'm going to take my black Baker's twine and I'm just going to tie a little bow here. And again, I kind of like to just leave those ends a little rough. And so if I take them and just between my finger and index finger here and take my other one and just do that, I can kind of just have them just a little bit of a uh, tattered edge there. Use my glue dot. And I thought I'd just place it down here in the corner a little bit. Okay. Now we have our two little paddles left. So what's a boat without these paddles? So I thought on the inside it would be fun for you to put your paddles and make it kind of like a paddle boat, really. I'm going to put just a little bit of my multi-purpose glue here, and I'm just going to do it like this and make it, I guess I should say a rowboat is what I mean to say. Put one at an angle that way. And if you bring the other one in and have it cross, it'll look a little like a rowboat, I think. If you're uncomfortable with these hanging up, you could always sneak a little glue dot underneath there, or you could just add a little bit more of the glue, too. Okay, so there's the second card. So in your kit, you would receive supplies to be able to make two of these cards and two of these cards as well with the purchase of the Buy the Dock bundle okay so i hope you've enjoyed uh this video today and thank you for watching uh, i really had fun creating with these cards and showing this unique bundle i just love this so i hope you consider grabbing the buy the dock bundle and you too could make these cards with the class to go kit remember to like comment and share my video for prizes you can't win unless you share uh, i will announce winners uh, on the last day of the bundle Thanks again uh, for joining me, and uh, I hope that you have a nice rest of your day.